Morecambe on the Lancashire coast where life moves at a gentle pace. But for one couple, there's no time for an easy life. Dad Noel is the proud father of 14 children. And now his wife Sue is about to have baby number 50. I really enjoy being pregnant, just love it all really. The feeling that you get obviously when they're just born does make you want to do it all over again, definitely. Over the past 22 years, they produced seven boys and seven girls. And this couple is determined to have even more. I think she's addicted to babies. Mm. She loves babies. I love babies, but I know I wouldn't have that many. No, I wouldn't have that many. Welcome to the Radfords. Mornings in the Radford house are chaos. There's non-stop crying. It's always noisy. There's so many kids and just all running around. It's a big day for the Radford household. The family, all 16 of them, are going on an outing. Hi, Jack. James. That means getting 14 kids dressed, fed, and out of the house on time. I don't like being late for anything, but generally we, we are. Right, let's go. From. The kids, aged from 22 years down to just 12 months, all live at home. So for this super-sized family, they need an extra-large form of transport, their very own minibus. Radfords are about to have their first look at the new baby. Hiya. There you go. I just couldn't believe how many of them there was. They just kept coming in, coming in. I'm pregnant with a little girl at the moment, and I was thinking, oh my God, 15 kids. And I was like, I can't even cope with two. She needs a medal. That's it, we're all in. Most of her adult life, 36-year-old Sue has been pregnant. Who is it? Hi. Baby. Tommy. Usually, when they're about between six and ten months, start thinking about maybe having another one. But then it never usually seems to take very long to get pregnant. I'm usually pregnant within a month. I can't remember her not being pregnant at all. <laughs> that sounds bad. I can't. <laughs> There's your baby, and there's its body, there's the heartbeat there. Oh, He's got a little hand in front of his face at the minute. <laughs> oh. oh. There he is. Yeah. I like seeing him. Well, he has very chubby cheeks, and he has a smile on his face. I like to smile. Look at his little foot. Yeah. From her expression, she was uh, she was in awe. She never took her eyes off the screen. Some mums, when the baby is born, they miss the pregnancy, and straight away they, they kind of get pregnant again within a few months. It's really wriggling, isn't it? It's like her own personal drug, having babies. <laughs> Honestly, it is. <laughs> it is, though, isn't it? Think about it. I suppose, in a way, you could say we are addicted to having children, yeah. Hmm. Sue and Noel are not the only couple in Britain who could be addicted to having kids. In Kent, this four-bedroom house is home to the ever-expanding Sullivan family. Mum Tanya has given birth to nine children and is now expecting two more. Society says four's more than enough. Five, you're mad. Six, pff, unheard of. Get to seven, people start leaving you alone. When Tanya met Mike, she already had two children. Since then, they've gone on to have seven more. There's someone born almost every single year. 
It's a house full of boys. Yes! Who outnumber their sister, Caitlin. But whether it's boys or girls, this couple just want more. We think that children are a blessing. We don't see why we should stop being blessed just because other people consider it too many people. Welcome to the Sullivans. Thirty-six-year-old Tanya is thirty weeks pregnant with twins, but she's as anxious as she's excited. As well as giving birth nine times, Tanya has had eight miscarriages. Miscarriages are hard, and eight miscarriages are, are no joke, and they are difficult. They are emotionally hard to get through. It puts a strain on you. I get very worried. I do. I have my own Doppler so I can listen to the baby's heartbeats. A fine line between being cautious and being paranoid, I think. But I'm in my arms and I want to know that they're all right. Despite her fears, Tanya has felt driven to have children from an early age. My dad likes to tell a story of when I was very young and I had a little wooden crib and all the uh, cuddly toys, I used to pull them out of my jumper one by one, put them in a crib and say, oh, there's another baby. And he said, oh, you've never changed. In Morecambe, it's seven in the morning. Father of 14, Noel Radford, has already been at work for two hours at the family bakery. Do about 80 hours a week of work, I'm not sure. But that's life. You do what you have to do. Back home, the chaos has begun. Luke, come on, hurry up. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. Despite being heavily pregnant, Sue's begun the military operation to get 14 kids ready for the day. Oh, it's not straight again. Usually, mad rush to get out of the door. A bit crazy. Get there. <laughs> Normally, we can't find our shoes. Mm. It's like a nursery. It's school leave. Mm, there's so many kids. I got Every morning, Noel returns from the bakery to lend a hand. Time to get up. Starting with getting the last stragglers out of bed. Good luck. Two loaves of bread, a large chunk of pig, and a bumper-sized family bag of crisps later, the lunch boxes are ready. Now there's just the last-minute scramble to find the right shoes. What size are you? Uh, this is the half hour, getting them all ready on time. The older ones that go to secondary school, they make their own way to school. So there's two in the nursery. And then there's seven at primary school. Once they're all in school, it's... Oh, thank God for that. Oi, oi, shh. I'm one of the oldest in the family at the school now. But um, then it's Millie, then Katie and James. And then... After James, it's Ellie, and then Amy, then Max, and then Josh. And all the teachers get muddled up who we are. Two hours later, Sue and Noel's family, the size of a rugby team, are finally on their way to school and off their hands, at least for the next few hours. In Kent, the Sullivans do things differently. Their school run starts and ends with the family stairs. Right, everyone, come in, please. While Dad's out at work as a joiner, the children gather round the kitchen table for homeschooling with Mum. Right, does everybody remember what we've been learning about? Um, yes, Harry? World War II. World War II. I think it is nice to have that control that you, you don't have when they're in a school environment. And I like to know what they're doing and what they're being influenced by. Three years ago, Tanya and Mike took the children out of mainstream education. Despite dropping out of college when she was pregnant with her first child, Tanya's confident she can do a better job herself. People say, oh, but you're not a teacher, so how can you teach them? They think, well, you don't have to be a teacher. I'm a, I'm a parent. And as good as any teacher is, they're not going to care about their education as much as I do. What were the people of Germany, what were they going through? How were they eating? 
Starving. They were starving, yes. Why were they starving? They didn't have enough money to buy anything. That's right, well done, Sid. It sounds very protective and quite controlling. There is a lot of negative influence and I'm not happy to willingly send my children into a situation that they are not equipped to handle at a particular moment in time. There are things like bringing in early sex education for the very young ones. We, we don't agree with that and as their parent it's up to me what I feel is appropriate for my children to know. A chancellor took over and his name was... Was it Adolf Hitler? Adolf Hitler. She's not qualified or anything to be a teacher. It's just um, she teaches you what she knows, and if she doesn't know, um, you'll look at, you'll search it out and research, or see if Dad knows it. Yeah. Oh, first, yeah. hold on a minute, Harry. You need to go inside because you're you're not doing this very well. Tanya has her hands full. She's got to cater for four-year-old Patrick as well as thirteen-year-old Caitlin and all the ages in between. OK, why? 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 So he became the leader. Shut the cupboard and sit still. Thank you. So he became the Children need to be guided. I think it's very easy for them to get caught up in, in wrong crowds and, and um, we have to be able to guide them first before we can say, OK, now you're able, now you can go. While the Radfords' kids are at school, Sue joins Noel at the bakery, despite being heavily pregnant. Her compulsion to have babies means that there are already 14 mouths to feed, but Noel's trying not to stress about money. We were trying to do all our shopping as cheap as we can. Most of them are still small, so they don't really eat much. Toilet roll we generally go through a lot of, because that gets wasted if you're not careful. I think if we were to start writing it all down on paper and what it costs to live and things, that's when I would start worrying. What are you doing, Josh? I can't really slow down. Constantly on the go. Shattered. But no, I don't, I don't really tend to slow down, obviously, because there's always a lot to do anyway, which I suppose is quite difficult being pregnant and having to look after so many you don't really get any time to sit down and relax. We do get tired though, don't we? Oh, yeah. You do get to a point in the day where you just think, oh, I just need to sit down. I think that's it, you daren't sit down, because as soon as you do that... You just... you wouldn't get back up again, would you? No. <laughs> Tea time! <laughs> Two hours later, and it's feeding time for 14 hungry children. It's mad living in this house. You never get peace if you do your lucky. It's your lucky day. <laughs> right, sit yourselves down. Different times of day can make a difference on noise levels. Sit down. Tea time that just usually kicks off a bit worse. On the menu today, 16 pork chops, three whole cabbages, 25 carrots and 7 kilos of spuds. No. Yeah. Yeah. 16. 12, 15, 16, that's it, we're done. That's it, sorted. Yeah. In this family, not everyone gets a seat at the dinner table. Ellie, sit down. Chloe, back down. What? Some families it might be like, um, like they're having a Christmas dinner. I guess if we're just doing that sort of thing every day. Come on then, who wants to listen? Me. Right, just a minute, Amy's first. Whenever Sue's pregnant, which is most of the time, she wants the rest of the family to bond with the impending arrival. Tell me what it sounds like. Rumbling. Rumbling? Can it sound like a steam train? Yeah. Come here. You can whistle me. When we announce that we're having another one to the kids, it's never a case of, mm, not another one. They love it as well. I think they enjoy being in a big family. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting to see a newborn. 
feels ages away since we've seen the newborn baby. No, it is. Just a minute. Sue and Noel started their family early. Sue was only 14 when she first became pregnant. He's peed his pants. When we found out that we were having Chris, it was just shock. Now listen. I don't really think it'll happen to you, but it does. No. And it took a while for it to sink in, I think, really. Is it the exact same thing? I suppose everybody makes different decisions in life and we chose to keep him. Both Noel and Sue know only too well the pain of unwanted pregnancies. Both of them were given up for adoption at birth. For whatever reason, my biological mum, she couldn't have me. She could have chosen to terminate during her pregnancy. So I guess, you know, I'm grateful that she didn't. And I'm here and I've got what I've got. Definitely felt as a child growing up that, you know, my birth mum didn't want me, I wasn't wanted, and that does affect you. Who's this? All I know is, as far as I'm aware, is um, my, my natural mother had me Christmas Eve. Um, I guess I was taken away then. I think she may have been a receptionist. <laughs> I never talk like so. I suppose it is because we are adopted. That's got something to do with us having so many. Um, I don't know. But part of living in such a big family is that there's, there is always somebody around. I think that's what we love, is that you never, you've never not got company around you. You've always got somebody. And they've always got somebody. I don't think they'll ever be lonely. Ever. In Kent, Tanya's determination to keep on having babies comes at a price. She's been having persistent headaches and she's getting increasingly worried. Woken up this morning feeling quite awful. Um, very dizzy, and then I was vomiting as well. So, feeling, I've still got the pain in my head, feeling generally just unwell, want to sleep. Of course, it's a worry for the babies. I just want the babies to be all right. Hello, yes, I'm 32 plus weeks pregnant with twins, um, and I've had a headache for this the fifth day in a row now. Um, for Tanya, the shadow of her previous eight miscarriages looms large. The memory of what happened before and what might happen again. One that I had miscarried and it, it came out incomplete in the sack in, into the toilet. And I called Mike and I said, look, and you could see, and it was a baby and it was like weeks old, but it was. And I think that kind of just made it hit home that this is, this is, a life. This is a baby. And I just sat there. I thought, I'm sorry, I couldn't look after you. <laughs> Tanya and Mike are committed Catholics. <coughs> At home, TV is strictly rationed. In the evenings, they regularly gather together for Bible study. Unless God is involved and is part of your life, then it doesn't matter what you do because it's all thanks to God that we have what we have. Praise the Lord your God. Praise For this couple, despite the risk of miscarriages, they see having a large family as all part of God's plan. If a child is meant to be, it's meant to be, and I, I don't, I'm not happy to get in the way of that. Your herds and flocks increase. God gave sex as a gift between a married couple, and that's how the teaching is. Contraception isn't something that should be used. Contraception is wrong. Do you think they meant? I think it meant if you have lots of children, then you're really, really happy. The more children you have, the happier you get. Morally, I don't see how it could be immoral to stop life. Uh, surely it's the other way around. It's immoral to stop it. 
once it's already started. I do worry that something might go wrong until that baby's in my arms and everything's all right. It doesn't matter how many times you go through it, you won't relax. In Morecambe, it's time for one of the Radfords' annual rituals. Buying a new pram. Sue's seeming addiction to having babies is matched by her compulsion to have a new set of wheels for each newborn. Was there any in particular that you'd seen? Uh, quite like this one. Right? Just one minute. She is addicted to prams non-stop. Every year she has to get a pram. She's got about three or four prams downstairs that she never uses. You see, I can peach. Right. So you can use it for a toddler and a newborn. A double one would be probably more practical, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's nice, that. I've definitely got a bit of an obsession with having a new pram, I think. <laughs> Bet we've had a good 20 prams, 25 prams, I reckon. So really, we don't really need a pram, but a new arrival, and she wants... I think I'm a bit of a pramaholic. <laughs> the family has spent more than six grand on prams over the years. The latest model is costing 500 pounds. It was a bit overwhelming, really. We were like walking through the door and just more coming in, more and more and more. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. They must go to bed absolutely exhausted. <laughs> she's chose wisely today, she's actually gone for the cheaper one, which, which is nice. For goodness sake, Josh, mind out the way, Lord. Tanya Sullivan has gone to see the consultant at her local hospital, worried about the health of her babies. At her age, with so many previous pregnancies, she's considered a high risk and the twins will have to be delivered by caesarean. Tanya's also having difficulty breathing, which could mean that she has serious complications with her pregnancy. If you had a lot of children, then, then one of the main concerns is uh, at the time of delivery is the risk of hemorrhage. It'll be her fourth caesarean, and she's having her 10th and 11th child. So she, she has significant risks of bleeding during surgery, and also has significant risks of hysterectomy. So these the, the risks are mounting up. I'm concerned that you are quite short of breath. What I'd actually like to do is bring you in and just check your chest and make sure that there isn't, that you don't have a clot on the lung. It's a bit of a worry to be told, you know, you might have a clot on your lung. It's better to get it checked, I think, rather than just risk it. Bank on that, I have it. <laughs> They can't say what to do with the babies until they know what's going on. Um, if I have got a clot, they have to start treatment to thin my blood. Yeah. Then that can pose risks of hemorrhage in delivery as well. So then they have to try and work out what to do with that. So I don't know. Just hope everything's all right anyway. So go tonight. And Tanya has to return to hospital for further checkups, and that means leaving her family behind. She's going to help mummy put mummy's stuff into the car. And then, oh. Mummy, 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 mummy. The only time I'm, I'm not with my family is when I'm in hospital to have a baby. I don't like being away from, from my family and my husband and my home. Is that yeah. Yes. Yeah. God, please let everything be all right. And if it's not going to be all right, then give me the strength to deal with it. The Radford family are going on holiday. It's their last chance for a break before baby 15 comes along. Because we work so hard during the year, 
I mean, and you're doing like seven days yeah. a week, aren't you now? It's just nice to get away to have quality time with the kids, even though it is a lot of hard work when you're on holiday. With having so many of them, you've obviously got to have eyes in the back of your head watching what they're doing all the time. With an eye on excess baggage fees, Knowles put a limit on luggage. The kids are allowed just five cases between 14 of them. We usually take about 120 t-shirts and then 60 pairs of shorts between them all. Why do you always get the zip side? Because I am perfect. She takes up so much room. No, oh. You're the one that packs about six pairs of shoes. I love my shoes. Right, exactly. Why do you Come need back. all these? Because I need it. But I've packed everything. Have you packed everything yet? Yeah. Yeah. No, you haven't. Sorry, I took one minute. pair uh, no. I, do I don't care, Sophie. We're going on holiday. We're going on holiday. This year, Sue and Noel have called in reinforcements to help. Sue's parents and Sophie's boyfriend, bringing the Radford headcount to 19. Hiya. Where are you travelling to today? Lanzarote. You got your passports, please? Yeah, just one sec. And how many are you travelling? 19. 19. Are you all you one family? Yeah. yeah, pretty right. much. Thank you. OK, it might take a bit longer than normal. I'm going to call all the children's names out. Right, so we've got Amy. Yep, here. Yeah. Chloe. Yeah. Jack. Jack. Chris. Yeah. Josh. I think it's more stressful for the lady behind the counter than it is. Crazy. I've never checked in that many children before, other than school groups. In Lanzarote, the Radfords are causing a stir. A lot of people do come up to us and ask us if they're all ours. To say, yep, yeah, they're all ours, all 14 of them. It's really embarrassing, actually, because there's always people staring and you're like, hmm. Two's enough for any family, I think. <laughs> Why would you want any more? It just... There's no television in the house. <laughs> Like the Bond Trap family, aren't they? All they need is a whistle. <laughs> Sue's mum, Christine, has been around for the birth of all 14 grandchildren. But she's concerned about her daughter's apparent addiction to having babies. She always was into babies, you know, from a young age, really. Every time she has a baby, she said, now this will be the last. <laughs> it never is. <laughs> I prefer them older, really, but... Um, the babies, she loves, you know, body can't take it forever and ever, so she has to start thinking of herself a little bit now, you know. In Kent, Mike's taken time off work to look after the entire family, as a poorly Tanya has been admitted to hospital for vital tests. <laughs> She's got a suspected blood clot on her lung. She's been getting headaches, dizziness, the loss of breath, which is what they're checking out now. And uh, we're still waiting for the results to come back. Hopefully it'll be good news. I've been thrown in at the deep end at the moment because what with Tanya in hospital, Paddy's not very well. It's, it's a bit of a sick house at the moment. The following day, Antonia's out of hospital. She's been cleared of a suspected blood clot on her lung, but her pregnancy still carries risks and she'll have a caesarean in two weeks' time. If I go into labour beforehand, obviously then they'll just deal with it because of the emergency. I'm so glad to be home out of there. The worst thing that could go wrong is something happened to the babies or to me. It could be seen as a bit selfish to go on when you're taking the risks. Well, I'm classified as high risk purely because of my age and the number of children I have. I was told that the risk of hemorrhaging was high. When I had my third child, when I had Caitlin, and I did hemorrhage with Caitlin, and then if I listened to the doctors then and didn't have any more children, and what would I have missed out on? There are risks. 
but uh, we think the risks are worth taking. The Radfords are having an easier time during their latest pregnancy. They're sunning it up in Lanzarote. The hardest thing for Sue and Noel is keeping track of their 14 kids. Down on the beach, it's a fine art, acquiring surveillance tactics. We usually do try and keep them in an area where we, we can see them so that they're just not all over the place. It does work, I think. <laughs> While Sue guards the top of the beach, yeah, come over this Noel way. picks up any strays down by the water. This way, over here. Not all the kids can swim. You're constantly watching them, but you can't. You can never 100% just sit back and relax. You've got to constantly be watching what they're doing. Two, four, five, six, seven. One of the smaller ones has disappeared from sight. So I'm looking for her now. And Noel started to panic. Worst nightmare is one of them just wandering off and not being able to find them. If you haven't got your eyes on them, then you don't know in what direction they've gone. Oh, he's there washing his feet. Yeah, we've got them all. They're all there. We are outnumbered, aren't we, me and Sue, but... Oh, he's outnumbered. Hello! Despite the worries of keeping track of their army of kids, Sue and Noel have no regrets about their ever-expanding family. Gosh, wow, look at that. So it's nice to look down the table and see what we've created over the years. See Chris at the end, the oldest one, and the youngest one at this end. And so sort of everything in between. Even though their big family is about to get even bigger, Sue can't help but make plans for what happens next. Do you think you'll have any more babies then, Mum? After this one? Yeah, we might have one more, do you think? Yes. Yeah. Do you think, <laughs> we, should have, do you think we should have one more after this one? Should have a girl? Yeah. Called, Isa called Isabel. No, a girl. No, he's a boy, isn't he? He's a boy. This one is a boy. He's a boy. Yeah. And another boy. No, and then another, another girl. We can't have any more with you. Sue's been talking about number 16 today with Sophie. So, I don't know. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly number 16. For Tanya, plans have changed abruptly. She's gone into early labour and been rushed into an emergency caesarean. After eight miscarriages and three previous caesareans, everyone is praying that things go well. Back home, a worried Mike's mum has stepped in to help with the kids. It's Tanya's health I think I'm concerned with more than anything. Let's face it, she'd had four of them. So close together. That's what concerns me, I think. Especially near the end of the pregnancy, it's like really worrying. The thing that you worry about every pregnancy, except multiplied, is there's, it has more risk. It's not just the two lives in David Jura, it's, the, it's got three now, so it's like everything just multiplies. Hello? No. No, don't even think about it. Get off. Ow! Get off. Ow! Get off. In the Radford house, it's all changed with the imminent arrival of baby number 50. Sue and Noel's decision to have even more children means that some of the older kids are being moved into the basement. The only space left. Josh, be quiet. Come in. Come in. I'm going to go to shop in a minute. <laughs> she can't have any more, because if she has any more, that's it, this house won't fit us. It's a bit crazy, but we're trying to not buy loads of more new furniture. We're trying to use some of the furniture that's already in some of the rooms, make it a bit cheaper. No, he hasn't. Oh, my God. I think she should stop soon. Because, I don't know, I'm going to have to move. No, because sometimes uh, your body can only take so much, can't it? Oh, my goodness. He's wearing jumpers, Dad. 
just got a dressing table to bring down and then that's it, done. It's easy enough. Not too stressful, I don't think. This is it now. This is me, done. Excited now, can't wait for him to pop out and greet us all. Give him a kiss. Oh, God. Oh, sorry, Tommy. In Kent, Tanya's emergency caesarean is underway. The last six weeks have been the hardest of all the ones. It's definitely got harder uh, towards the end than it normally does. With Tanya's history of miscarriages, it's an anxious time for everyone. 30 long minutes later, and the twins are born, both safe and healthy. Yeah, they've been born. Are you on the speaker? Are you on the speaker? Back home, the big question is whether babies 10 and 11 are boys or girls. You're on speaker, Dad. For the past 13 years, Caitlin's been outnumbered by boys. Pardon? The first one is a girl. Really? Yay! Really? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> second one. Here's another girl. Really? Hey. No! Are you joking? Are you joking? I've only a little sister since, um, like for years. Um, so now I've got the two. I was really, really happy. It's lovely. It's um, I'm I'm stunned. <laughs> Look at what we've got. In Morecambe, the Radfords' 15th baby is now due. It's that big. No, that big. That big. That big. No, that big. Sue's parents have been mobilised to help, and the whole family is struggling to choose a name. Oh, well, it's Edward's mm. quite nice. Chris, Sophie, Chloe, Jack, Daniel, Luke, Millie, Katie, James, Ella, Amy, Josh, Max, Tilly. And no, who did I miss? What's the choice? What's the Lay it choices? on the table. Tommy. Tommy Tucker. But but then we kind of thought, well, Tilly and Tommy is a bit... Yeah. It's a bit yeah. into it, really. And plus yeah. it'll get shortened to Tom. I don't really want that. Then we've got Oscar. But then Chloe said, well, it might get shortened to Ozzy. It's Barry. Right. No, that's yeah. a definite no. Um, Cyril? No. No? Cecil? No, 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 no. No, well, I, 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 It's a good job you're not choosing his name, isn't it? <laughs> you think about it, it could be on you. That night, Sue's contractions have begun. I think it's going to come out now. Look, we're having another one now. Having another one what? Contraction. Oh, that is really hard. What? Wow. Hi, this is Suzanne Radford. I've um, been having contractions every five to seven minutes. Suzanne Radford. No, it's not. It's number 15. She said, um, is it your first baby? I said, no, it's number 15. She said, I think you'd probably better come up then sooner rather than later. <laughs> After two nights in hospital, Tanya and her twin baby girls are back. Their four-bedroom house is now home to two more children. 
been so lucky. Look at them, how perfect they are. Despite all the risks involved and her fears of miscarriage, Tanya still wants more. That feeling in the delivery room when, you know, they hand your baby over and everything. It, oh, I just can't get over it. I'm not going to be fertile forever. Everyone's got their shelf life. I'll have had eight in eight years. I might have another 10 years yet. One at a time. One at a time. Till time's up. In Morecambe, Sue's in hospital. She's been in labour for 19 hours. Finally, her 15th baby has arrived. 7, 12. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not that long, it's quite chunky. Our own now, brothers and sisters, gonna make you hear it, man. I don't think you can get a better feeling than meeting a new little person. I don't think there's anything better than that. I certainly don't ever want my children to ever feel like they're not wanted or loved or cared for. You're doing you <laughs> I was adopted at one week old. My birth mother having to give me up, she must have been very sad and lonely for quite a long time afterwards because it's a, a, a massive thing to have to go through and I, I know I couldn't do that ever. I think I was about seven-ish, somewhere around then when my mum and dad told us that we were adopted. It might have been an easy thing for him, it might have been a difficult thing for her, I don't know. I guess I will, never will, so I mean I hope she's okay. Um, a minute. I would like to think that she does think about me, definitely. People have said, you know, do you not want to ever track her down? Do you, are you never interested in that? I think it is the fear of rejection. You know, you could track your birth mother down and they wouldn't want anything to do with you. And I just think I, I, I wouldn't want to go through that, I don't think. Why did he I think we like the fact that we're never lonely, which is what we love about having so many. So, we'll never be lonely. He's been doing all the kicking in mummy's belly, hasn't he? <laughs> I actually, physically, cannot imagine her stopping having babies. I just can't imagine it. I think she's just going to carry on. Why did he stop? No, but look, now he's going Definitely would like to not say never again. And I definitely would like to maybe have another one. But who knows if that one will turn into another two, three. <laughs> we don't know. Never say never. You want a cuddle? You can. Yeah. You, your new baby. 